quite a while back. I think I think before last Christmas, I went into a uh, local game store. It's not local; it's it's in the city, and they um, they had a sale on Games Workshop stuff. Basically, they needed sort of shelf space for all the new stuff that was coming for Christmas. So they were things that I guess doesn't sell well. <laughs> maybe, uh, was on sale. And I got these things. Endless spells for the two armies that I've been working on, which is Stormcast and the Night Haunt. And I hadn't planned on getting them, but I mean, it, they were, it was half price on half price. Uh, so they were, I mean, they were pretty cheap. And they've just been lying around in a box and I haven't paid much thought to them until recently when I, you know, I figured I could use these to try, try some new things. There's stuff I want to try. And what I want to try and make, a, you know, what this video is going to be about is sort of zenithal priming with, like, use a black first and then use a, a metal instead of a white. These are magic. So if if they're sort of a bit metallic, shiny, then that's fine. And and then I'll try and paint the, like, the zenithal priming with the metallic with clear colors, washes or contrast paints or whatever, so that you see the metallics uh, through. I'm mainly going to focus on the, for this video, I'm going to start on the focus on the Celestian Vortex, which is the big swirly thing. So first, I've already done that because it's boring, prime them with the Chaos Black. I went to another local game store, which is sort of a 10-15 minute bike ride for me to find a metallic, a metallic spray to use. And I, I could only find this, they probably had more, I just couldn't find it, which is plate mail metal from Army Painter. I would have wanting, wanted a brighter metallic, like an aluminium or a silver, because this is a bit darker, but this is what I could find, so this is what I'm using. I mean, in theory, Zenithal priming is because, like, the light comes from above, like, it's shining on me from this artificial lamp, it's not the sun. Same thing why it's called Zenithal is because the sun is in a zenith and it shines down on your miniature. And, but these, I mean, these are supposed to, it's magic, they're sort of emitting light, so I might, I'm just trying to get sort of a, a coverage, but still keep some black in the recesses. I mean, it's pretty, the metallic is pretty gray. It is still shiny, but it's, it's a bit gray. Silver would have been nicer, but it's, it's still got a depth to it. This is the, the vortex. Here's the, the uh, meteorite called something. Everblade Comet. There's that thing. Whatever that is, and here's the scythe from the other one. I'm just gonna grab, I have a chainmail, which is probably the, the, the brightest metallic I've got. I'm just gonna try give this a dry brush. See, that just makes them shine a little bit more. I mean, you can see the, the difference on the highlights. I wanna get these done pretty fast. Hopefully, uh, that's <laughs> what I'll be doing. If you've been watching my videos by now, you've probably realized that I'm not good at fast. Uh, it took its time. I mean, these, these things are big. I did all of them. I did the meteorites and these things as well. Now, if, if you're new to this, you know, if you haven't watched any of my videos before, then I want to clarify that all my videos are basically me trying something for the first time. Like, I've never Zenithal primed anything with a metal before, and this is the first time I try and then paint that with a clear color. So I got, actually, got my first contrast paints. These are well debated and talked about, but basically they're, you can see through them. It's like a thick wash or something. Hopefully if I paint that on there, then, then it'll look like a metallic blue. Now, uh, the names. I've got an aethermatic blue and a pterodon turquoise. I think for the swirly bits, like this, the blue magic smoke stuff. And then for the hammers, um, I'll probably go for a, a wash. I've got Seraphim Sepia, Sepia, Seraphim Sepia here. Reichland, Reichland, Flesh Shade. And I've also got, I was in a, on a holiday in London for a few days recently and, and bought two souvenirs, which is my first inks. It's Formula P3. There's a, there's a blue ink and a green ink. Not sure if I'm going to use them, but I've never bought inks, never used inks, got some. Now, as always, when, I, when using a, a wash, especially on metallics, uh, I don't like taking it straight out of the pot. I like to put it on something uh, so that I don't get, sort of contaminate the, the wash with small metallic flakes. They usually have a tendency to come off. 
and then you've got them forever living in your wash. So this is the Seraphim sepia. And I'm not really too worried about overspilling. It's all blurry magic anyway. I did all these hammers. I also went in and did the this thing. Added some gold here and there. Or Seraphim sepia. I think I just want a little bit more or less <laughs> sepia. So I'm gonna dabble on some of this uh, flesh shade as well. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. That'll gives a bit more golden look. So I guess there's an awful amount of hammers and the big thing, not the big thing, but I mean, this has got an inside and an outside. So the hammers are done, not done, but they, they've been washed with the two washes. And before I go on to the blue, see, I'm already prepared. I want to, um, I want to just dry brush them just ever so slightly with the, uh, with the chain mail the old Citadel chainmail. Like, not a lot, just picking out the ridges, just to get them shine a bit more. And I was wondering before why, why the world was blurry today and I realized I hadn't put my glasses on. So just a, just a really, really soft dry brush on these hammers. Time to move on to the blue. We're going with contrast paints. Arithmetic, just say that fast. And it'll sound good. Pterodon turquoise. I've got some contrast medium. Like I've never used contrast paints. This is the first time. So I have no idea how dark these will be or how much I need to dilute them. And same as with before, like I don't want to take it straight out of the pot and put it in there. I'll do the dark one and regret later. So yeah, that's looking pretty magical. Now if I just add some contrast medium here and there, I can thin thin it out a bit. It's looking nice. There's just so much of it. Um, all these swirly bits. But while that dries, I'm going to start on the meteorite. Pretty much doing the same thing. Again, I think I'll do the dark one down here and then do the, um, what do you call it, the fire? Is it a fire? I don't know. Do these in, in this one. What is it they say? One thick coat. And then it's the, uh, what is it? Deus, Deus Arcanum. Okay, so things are still drying. Um, it's kind of a moist day here today and I don't know if contra contrast paints take longer to dry, maybe, perhaps. Everything feels a little bit slightly uh, sticky still. And I realized I think I want to dry brush this uh, a little bit as well, just to highlight it. This one I reckon is almost finished. I even did it underneath. Hopefully no one's going to look underneath my miniatures, but I might as well do a proper job. The Comet is fairly boring. It's just green. I'm gonna to have to have a bit of a think about what to do with this. I, I will probably start with a bit of a dry brush. I know I said I was just gonna concentrate on this one, but you know, I've got them all here, so I might as well paint them all and I won't have to do them another day. Lastly, it's this big scythe. This is also huge. Imagine being like, you know, I'd be scared. I gave this just the one coat of eighth, ether, Aethermatic blue, and I'm gonna give it another one. So I'm just waiting for that to dry completely. So, um, yeah, I think it's still, if you can do it, if you can swing it, it's a great convention to at least hit once because it is astounding and it will blow you away. Um, it's the biggest one in the country, so absolutely. So this way I get sort of like a, a purple streak from every hammer and also blending it into to the rest of the vortex. There's two last steps. One is I'm going to try out, I said before I bought, uh, bought this little uh, souvenir for myself, which is a uh, green ink from Formula P3. Now what I want to do at the end of every hammer 
has just had a bit of a like a, a glow of green just sort of like there's some some magical lights going sort of like reflections from the magic the ink was I watered it down a lot and I'm onto the to the chain mail and I just here and there I just want to sort of just catch uh, some highlights and I've got my chain mail and it's also really sort of watered down so I'm just brightening these sort of edges on the on the hammers and I'm not going to do any more but there it is nice and um, magically there's a bit of a green glow going from sort of where I use the ink there's some purple there's all kinds of swirly things and I started with the comet and I accidentally started to paint blue ink on these veins and I really like the way it looks. It's just very time consuming. Um, but it, it just looks cool. So I'm going to have to keep on doing that, which is a bit of a shame. Blue ink from Formula P3. Just painting blue ink on all these little veins, whatever you want to call them. I wish I hadn't tried <laughs> and I wish I hadn't liked it. So the blue is looking pretty pretty cool. I think what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to try and make the, the upper parts of the comet like these things just a bit warmer by adding some Reichland flesh shade. Karlberg. I've been saying Karsbra because it just sounds nice. Uh, apparently it's Karlberg and just try and get it on some of the raised areas. So I think on top of that I'll add, try and add in some uh, flesh shade, just to get it a bit more brown than red. There we are, Comet. Done. Now for this thing you can see I've done the two layers of um, Ithematic Blue. Saying it fast makes it sound good. And then uh, Beetle Tang Green on top of these ghost things. And I'm not really fond of this and I'm thinking because this is um, scary ghosts and stuff. I'm gonna make it dark. I'm gonna make it really, really dark. I'm gonna take Vallejo's uh, black wash, which is basically really black. See, that was black, wasn't it? And now basically I've mixed the two inks, which is the green and the, and the blue. I've got sort of a turquoise ink going, and I'm just f fiddling about to get some kind of a made up magical look. For me one of the fun things with painting because I'm new at it is is trying new things because basically I have no idea what's going on and I just keep on going until things look sort of roughly the way I like it. So I'll try and warm these. So I'll start with the Cosby Crimson or Karaberg. Is it Karaberg? Karaberg Crimson. This is all looking very weird. <laughs> if this came at me I'd be scared just because you know, there's a big scythe coming. I'll also be scared because of the lollipop flavor going. But hey, why not? It's magic, isn't it? I mean, I'd, I'd be scared if I wasn't just this small and this big thing came at me. I'd be scared just because of the strange colors coming at me. It turned out the way I wanted it to be, as in um, it looks a bit more like magic than than what the rest of the miniatures do. Pretty cool. It's all shiny, as you can see. Like with this light, everything, like where it shines is, it, to you it would appear brighter than it actually is because of the, the reflections of the light. What was that? Everblaze Comet. Also looking sort of like magic. I was about to say Wheel of Fire. Um, what was this? Deus. Arcanum. I just added a bit of a, an Alno Al wash on, on the silvery parts that I left there and I sort of poured some, sort of stained it at the edges here so it looks like there's been water drop dripping down there or something. I don't know if you can see it. I've actually, <laughs> these small ones, it's pretty ridiculous, but one's green and one's blue all the way around. So you can sort of, anyway. Shyish Reaper, and out something like that. 
So I'm happy with how this turned out. Please like and subscribe. Uh, it's always nice. Help spread the videos around. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, images of these will probably appear on my Instagram if you want to see what they look like without uh, me moving them around a lot. It's 52 miniatures on Instagram. See you.